So there are literally so many resources online for medical school and it can be a bit overwhelming as to which ones to actually choose to study because you can't get through all of them. So which ones are actually good and which ones should you not use? So in this video, I'll be going over the best resources I use and recommend for studying clinical medicine. Hello guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name's Abian. I'm a medical student studying in London. So I split this video up into two parts, one being resources for clinical medicine and the other being resources for OSCE because the types of resources and the approach you take is a bit different. So for clinical content, the first resource I recommend is Pass Medicine. So this is actually an online question bank and I've made a video on, you know, if you're struggling to choose a question bank between Pass Med and QuizMed. So if you haven't used that, then check the video out. However, one of the things Pass Med does really well is the actual textbook. So I think they call it the Knowledge Tutor, but essentially it's a list of all the topics and it's got notes on the topics. The notes are kind of short, easy to read, they're based on the NICE UK guidelines and they keep updating it to make sure that the content stays relevant. So one of the ways I recommend, you know, in some of my previous videos of a good way to study is actually go through the past med questions and read through the explanation. Even sometimes the comments. Some of the comments have mnemonics and ways to understand or remember things that can be quite helpful. The second resource I recommend is Kumar and Clark's Clinical Medicine. This is a textbook, but I don't actually have the physical textbook. I just have it downloaded on my iPad because my university allows us to download the digital version for free. And so I mainly use this as a reference tool for any particular topics that I don't understand fully. So I don't use it very often, but if there is a topic that I'm struggling with, then I can quickly reference it in the textbook and read a bit more to understand a bit more about the topic. You know, if you purely just want to get through medical school, PassMed has all the content you need, but if you want to understand something, not just memorize something, then this textbook is quite a good reference. And having the digital version means you can also just search through keywords and find exactly what you're looking for. For example, I remember one day just realizing I don't understand about jaundice and bilirubin and the different types, prehepatic, hepatic, post-hepatic, conjugated, unconjugated. I remember being so confused and I just looked up the concept in Kumar and Clark's textbook by just searching for it on the iPad and it had a whole section on jaundice and I read through it and I thought, oh wow, it's literally explaining the actual thing I was stuck on. Because before I would just be like, right, okay, I don't understand something, fine. I don't have the time, you know, I'm just gonna memorize it. But that's actually not an effective way to learn because if you understand something properly, then you're more likely to remember it anyway. So this textbook is very handy for clinical medicine for that purpose. Next resource I recommend is the Teach Me series. This is a website where it's basically got a bunch of articles on different topics. They don't cover all the topics, but the ones in clinical medicine that they cover are obzingaini and surgery and also pediatrics. Tricks. But they also have, you know, a preclinical section. I remember uh, I used to use Teach Me Anatomy back in the day. I also discovered that they have a Teach Me Physiology section, which I've not used, but I don't understand why it won't be as good as the other ones. But essentially, they're just short, well-written articles, easy to read. They explain a concept, the level you need to know as a medical student. And so especially for my fifth year, where we had the specialties year, I remember using it for Obzingaini and finding it really helpful. It was actually the way I learned most of the Obzingaini content along with my medical school lectures. So next thing I recommend is AMBOSS. Now this is a kind of like a clinical content knowledge database slash online encyclopedia type situation. It basically lets you search for a particular condition or a thing in medicine and it has articles and notes on it as well as having beautiful diagrams which help you understand things a bit more clearly. And so it's very useful for just understanding a particular condition because most of the times if you you know google a particular condition you might not end up with the best article you might not end up with the most factually accurate information or it might just be intended for patients so you might 
might not find exactly what you're looking for. Whereas this is made by doctors for doctors and medical students. So the information is written in a way that you'd want to see. And the good thing about it is it's got hyperlinks throughout the text for the different terms that it uses. So it's a bit like Wikipedia, where if you don't understand something, you can just hover over or click on the hyperlink to learn a bit more. And one of its very useful features also is it has an Anki add-on. So if you're going through your Anki cards, you know, if you've made them yourself, you may not need to use it as often, but if, especially if you're going through someone else's pre-made deck and it has words that you're unsure about, you can literally hover over them on Anki because Amboss will pick up all the medical jargon and terminology and underline it so that every time you hover over it it will open up the article associated with it and so you can read about it to learn a bit more or to understand things a bit more clearly. They literally have doctors from top American universities like Harvard, Yale and Stanford that moderate and develop the content. So if I were to say one bad thing about it is if you're studying, you know, the UK board, it's not as tailored. It's more for USMLE and the American board. However, I will also talk about a good resource for the UK specific guidelines as well. So the next is the Oxford Handbook of Clinical Medicine. This is, you know, sometimes referred to as the cheese What's it called? The cheese and onion. I, I never call it that, but some people do because of the color of the outside of the book. But it's essentially got all the various different topics in medicine and it's got summary notes on that topic. What I find is that the notes in Oxford Handbook of Clinical Medicine are a bit too dense and so it's not ideal for learning information off of for the first time. So for that, I'd recommend using other resources that I've mentioned in the video earlier. However, if you're just revising or going over a particular condition, what Oxford Handbook does really well is summarize the key points of that particular condition or that particular topic in medicine. The next resource I'm recommending is BMJ Best Practice. Now this is similar to Amboss in that it's a reference tool for particular conditions. However, it uses UK based NICE guidelines. And so if you're after just learning about a particular condition, feel free to use Amboss. However, if you want management and guidelines and investigations that are specific to the UK, then BMJ Best Practice is very good. It also has kind of a step-by-step -step approach as to how you should think, so what differentials you should consider, what approach you should take, what questions to ask in the history, what investigations you should do, so it is very much geared towards using it on a daily basis when you're practicing medicine. So I suspect it will be very handy for when I, you know, start working as an F1 to actually use on the wards. One thing I also like is that it has a section on patient information leaflets or patient information language or whatever it's called. And that basically just summarizes a particular condition and you can print out a PDF and hand it over to your patients. And so if there's something that you need to explain to a patient, you're unsure how to do it, you can just flick through that information to see how they've explained it to a patient. You might even decide to, I don't know, print it out and give it to the patient. I've never done that before, but you know, that sounds like a nice thing to be able to do. Or just even like email the link to them or, you know, attach them or, or whatever it is to give them that piece of information. So next I'm going to talk about OSCE specific resources. The first one being the OSCE Stop book. If you were to pick one book to study your OSCEs from, I would recommend just this book book alone. It covers everything you need to know. It is a bit, you know, a bit bland in that it's black and white and it's just got block text and actually I think it does have a bit of colour but mostly it's black and white apart from some of the pictures that it uses but so it's a very kind of like a dense read. You have to really focus and want to get through it but it does have a lot of very very good and concise information. It's split up into the different parts you'd expect for an OSCE so it's got a section on history, on examinations, on practical procedures, on ethical scenarios, on prescribing so on and so forth. So it's got the sections you'd expect for your OSCE and it's kind of a book that you can go through on your own. You know normally OSCE you'd study with others and practice and role play. This is just the content aspect of it so it's something that you can go through on your own but when it does come to revising for OSCEs the best method is to practice with other people and for this I recommend OSCE cases with mark scheme book this is basically a book which has different OSCE stations and if you study in a group one person can be the examiner another person can be the patient another person can be the clinician and you can take turns and time yourself and mark it because it's got the scenario it's got the mark scheme it's 
got the patient brief, it's got the actor brief. And so it's a very good way to role play doing OSCEs because, you know, it simulates the kind of environment you have in your actual OSCEs. And again, it's got topics covering different specialties across medicine. So you can just pick and choose which ones are tested in your particular OSCE. In order to be good, one of the things you need to do is practice clinical examinations. And so one of the resources I recommend for that is Geeky Medic. They have videos. I'm sure you've heard of, you know, Geeky Medics and used it already, but it's really good for clinical examinations, you know, for chest, resp, abdo, cardio, all of these clinical examinations, how to actually do them step by step, what to look out for, because it's got video along with accompanying article for that particular procedure or examination or clinical skill and so on and so forth. So it covers a lot of the doing aspects you'd have to do in the OSCE and it being a clinical examination, that is the best way to practice. So, you know, when it comes to the OSCE resources I've talked about, I've talked about kind of like the knowledge content that you can study by yourself, the OSCE stop, but also the practical and the clinical aspects that you need to practice with others. You can even practice by yourself. I literally used to sometimes practice in front of like a pillow being the patient and record myself and just listen back to see how cringy I sounded or what I missed out or this that and the other but with all this content you need to learn and the resources I mentioned you need to be making good notes and have a good way to structure your notes and so I've made a video on how I use Notion in medical school to organize and store my notes so if you're interested in my system for doing that then check out the video over here with that being said thank you for watching and I'll catch you again in my next video